here at the Western Museum of Flight with the Goodyear blimp that has been retired. And we have the current pilot for the new blimp. Can you tell us what your title is and the name of the new blimp? Uh, my title is Assistant Chief Pilot for Wingfoot 2, the newest Goodyear blimp in the fleet. And your name is? William Bayless. And can you please give us a walk around of the blimp that's been retired? The various pieces are on exhibit here at the Western Museum of Flight in Torrance. Yes, we're uh, very excited to be able to have the history shown at uh, the Western Museum of Flight for the time being. We spent about 50 years flying this model, so there's a special place in all of our uh, Goodyear Associates hearts for these GZ20s. Just behind me here is the Spirit of Innovation gondola from the last GZ20 Alpha model blimp operated in the world. We retired this about eight months ago in March 2017 here in Los Angeles, California. You can see the car, or gondola as we call it, it's about 22 feet long. Uh, held six passengers plus one pilot. The new model blimp we have here now, Wingfoot 2, held 10 passengers plus two pilots. It's roughly another 10 to 15 feet longer as well. We're sitting in here, uh, the pilot seat of the GZ20 Alpha model. Um, so we see hanging down here are all of our dampers. So that controlled our air system and pressure system. So that's how we moved air in and out of those ballonets to balance the, uh, the trim of the blimp. So one distinct difference with the new Goodyear blimp versus this last GZ20 Alpha model. So you see all the analog gauges, um, normal six pack that pilots are used to. Um, that's all encompassed into glass displays. We have nine glass screens in the new Goodyear blimp. So all of this information, all the gauges, all the buttons are all consolidated to these glass screens with the new model of airship. Some fuel controls up top above the dampers. We also have some controls for the helium valves as well. Just in case we have a fuel dump, which is the left, uh, the red damper here. So in the event that we need to make ourselves a little bit lighter, um, whether it's on a takeoff or landing, or loss of an engine, we could dump fuel. Um, with this new model airship, we have 700 kilograms max dumpable water. So there's no, um, there's no reason to dump fuel. We can't dump fuel in the new airship. All right, up here is uh, a lot of our systems control. So uh, generators, a lot of electronic system. Also the power for our camera and of course the uh, night sign. So we have controls up here to turn on and off that night sign. Of course that draws a lot of power. I believe it was about 100 amps. So uh, we turn it off at lower power settings for landing. It's one of the biggest power draws. Uh, the other power draws that were pretty big were the ballonade blowers and uh, also the landing light. So those are the things you'd, uh, you'd want off first if, say, you uh, only had one generator working. All the light controls up here, fuel controls. This is uh, two of our radios. We have a crew radio and uh, the network director radio. So that's who we're listening to when we're providing aerial coverage, um, whether it's a director for ESPN, ABC, CBS. Uh, we're listening to him to position the ship accordingly to get the uh, beautiful aerial, aerial shots everyone's used to, used to from the Goodyear blimp. Circuit breaker panel over there on the far, far corner. And you get a good view of all the dampers for the air controls, pressure controls, and emergency fuel dump. We had about just under 300 gallons of dumpable fuel. Uh, over on the left side here, just to the left of my uh, left knee, these are all the engine controls. Um, so just like most uh, piston-powered aircraft, we've got a mixture, prop control. We also have reverse thrust. So with those fixed uh, Continental IO360 engines, uh, we have no brake on the one Goodyear tire underneath the GZ20A. So we had reverse thrust, and that's how we slowed down, so we didn't run over the 15 people about to catch the blimp. Uh, over on the left side here, just to the left of my uh, left knee, these are all the engine controls. Uh, so like most piston-powered air aircraft, we've got the mixtures for both engines, uh, left and right, or port and starboard. Um, for the fuel, these are the propeller controls, these are the throttles, forward thrust, and of course, like I mentioned earlier, we don't have brake uh, brakes on the blimp, so we use reverse thrust. Um, so moving these back, and lifting the levers up, this would direct thrust forward to help slow us down. Um, this is the blower control. So when I want to send air into those ballonets, we've got fans that shoot about uh, about 600 cubic feet a minute of air into whatever ballonet I direct it with these dampers. Also have cow flaps, of course, cow flaps controls down here, and the landing light controls really close to the throttle for uh, ergonomic design, of course. This is the lower vertical stabilizer off of our last GZ20A model that we operated. The spirit of innovation was our call sign. And you can see down here the end number. Notice it's a very short registration number, November 4 Alpha. Uh, so some history behind that. We've been flying blimps in uh, Southern California and the United States for about 100 years. So before the FAA existed, we had all the shortest end numbers. And so moving to the back. So here we are at the back end of the lower vertical stabilizer. 
Uh, just behind me is um, the size of about a barn door is the lower rudder control. So on the GZ20, we had four flight control surfaces arranged in sort of a plus sign. Then we had an upper rudder and a lower rudder. And this is the uh, lower rudder behind me. We also had a tail wheel. Um, purpose that served for our old GZ20A model airship. So when we did very heavy uh, static lift takeoffs, our max heavy was about 800 pounds down. So you'd have to get the pitch just right. And that tail wheel was there to protect, uh, of course, the uh, lower vertical stabilizer and lower rudder. Just down here is one of the propellers off of our GZ-20A model airships. And this was geared to a Continental IO360 engine that was specially designed for the blimp. Um, also fully forward and forward uh, reversible thrust. Uh, of course, it was a fixed pitch pro propeller as compared to our current model blimp where it's vectoring. All right, we're looking at the landing gear here. So we landed this 200 foot long airship on one Goodyear tire down there. Uh, how we did that is basically the ballonet system inside the airship uh, we balance that with air, so that compensates for the changes in helium as we climb and descend with altitude. Um, so we have that trimmed off, and ideally when we land, the blimp lands perfectly level on this one landing gear. All right, we're looking at one of our helium valves here. Um, this was specific to the GC20. We had two of these, uh, one on each side of the envelope, pretty close to the Goodyear logo. Reasons for these, uh, they're valves, of course, so they'd open at a predetermined pressure. It's about three inches of water, as far as the pressure would automatically open. Depending on the flight, if we needed to go up very high or clear terrain, we would open this purposefully, and we have a valve rate and a chart that we'd use to determine how much helium we valved, of course, that would add to our weight. If you get rid of helium, you get heavier. All right, just behind me here is the nose cone off of uh, the GC20 Alpha model. Kind of gives you an idea of the size. Um, this was about roughly 32 feet off the ground, and uh, just this nose uh, the, the tip of the nose cone is where we would moor the blimp onto our expeditionary mooring mast at the end of the day or when we were finished flying. Um, this mooring mast would hold the blimp rated up to about 100 mile an hour winds. So if you're ever um, in some sort of stormy conditions, of course a thunderstorm, we're never flying in that kind of weather. Um, but the safest place for the blimp is on the mast. Uh, you can see basically coming off of each of these, um, they're called battens. So there's about 18 of those, and they strengthen the nose of the blimp. So when we went to higher speeds, closer to 50 knots or 50 miles an hour, um, that strengthens uh, the nose of the blimp as we fly at uh, higher pressure, higher air speeds. All right, so what we're looking at here is um, some of the ballonet fabric. So uh, in short, inside of the blimp, it's not just helium. We use what's called ballonets. We have two ballonets on the uh, last GZ20 Alpha model in the world. And basically what the ballonets do is compensate for the changes in helium as we climb and descend, also with temperature. So um, basically when the sun comes out every morning, the helium expands. And we have to take air out of these ballonets using the valves on the belly of the blimp. Uh, conversely, when the sun goes down at night, the helium contracts. So we have to introduce air into one of these ballonets, of course maintaining the trim. So there's always somebody watching all Goodyear blimps, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Very important job. Uh, they call it babysitting the blimp. She requires a lot of attention. All right, so what we're looking at here is a piece of the fabric off the old uh, GZ20 Alpha model. Uh, this particular sec section was on the um, port side of the blimp. So we had roughly 3,200 of these boards here. We had night sign boards, day sign boards with different levels of LED intensities uh, for the light lighting conditions. Uh, we called this sign Eagle Vision, which is basically 90s technology. And this is how we displayed all the messages across the blimps when we were overhead um, sporting events or um, whatever event we were covering. 